Welcome back, everybody. A 2021 article in the Canadian Medical Association Journal says that in this country's healthcare system, there are reports of experiences of anti-Black racism around, abound, and that Black physicians, physician trainees, and racialized healthcare providers report experiencing racism in Canadian healthcare institutions. Now, while this may be surprising to some, it is not at all surprising to our next guest, who experienced that racism firsthand. Our guest today is the Department Head for Critical Care at the Ottawa Hospital, who is passionate about bringing awareness to these issues in our health care system. Welcome, Dr. Kwajo Karamantang. Hello. Thank you for having me. With the do you really believe that the racism in the healthcare system starts way back in medical school, and you've actually personally experienced that? Um, can you talk a little bit about that experience and how it impacted your career? Yeah, this was a real unfortunate situation where we were learning about vitamin D and the importance of sunlight, and the the professor essentially made it sound in, that people from African descent were inferior based on some of these. Uh, some of these impacts and what a what a hard spot to be in when you know that professor has a direct impact on your future and at the same time you want to represent your people and and stick up for what's right and yeah that was that was one of my earlier unfortunate episodes where you spoke up front, yeah you had to speak up like yeah. it, it just wasn't you know everyone's got a, a, a different disposition but you know, my, my parents raised me in this in the way that you stick up for yourself. You stick up for those that can't stick up for themselves. Yeah. 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 So that's the experience uh, as a student, but then you have the degree, you're practicing. So as a doctor, as a black doctor working in the healthcare system in Canada, what has your experience been like? You know, the, the funny thing is you, you think as you get through the profession, as you get through the ranks that this would happen, this wouldn't happen, these mm -hmm. uh, episodes of racism. But even a few weeks ago, I, one of the nurses presented me as head of the department or chief of the department, and the patient looks at the nurse and starts shaking their head and saying, this, this can't be, you must be chief of some African tribe. And, and it was just, yeah, like it, and this is, you know, I'm in a situation where I'm there for the patient. I'm there to try and get them through this tough time and, and to be treated like that. And, you know, I've been in a room when they've asked for the real doctor. I've been, uh, I've been called the N word by, by patients. Like it's, you know, it's, it's hard to talk about, but it's an important issue that, that unfortunately it's, it's still present despite, despite it being 2023. Thank you for sharing that. I know that was hard. We appreciate, I think that, you know, hearing that reaction we need to hear it because this is a reality. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. K, I, I've been following you online for many, many years, and I, maybe like a lot of people, were really seeking information during especially the pandemic, especially when we were stuck at home. We were trying to get as much information as possible, and I really found your posts extremely helpful. Um, but what I was also watching online as I followed you was other medical professionals, other doctors bullying you online, actually. Yeah. And so can you share a little bit about what, I mean, listen, we all know that some parts of social media is the toilet. We, uh, we get that. I saw some of that, especially directed towards you. So can you tell us some of the messages you were hearing when you were sharing vital, life-saving COVID information? And also, who were the messages coming from? Yeah, I, I got to say how disappointed I was in a lot of our professions, professionals. Like when, when we're trying to articulate some of our concerns and some of the data to try and get us through this tough time, and it wasn't a discussion, it was just, it was one side versus another, it was so dichotomous. And what we're looking for is the truth. How do we get through this? And mm -hmm. knowing that people can throw these horrible messages towards you. Like I've had attacks on my family. I had, I had, uh, I had one, one person accused me of wanting to see more patients, uh, to make more money during the pandemic. Like it was just getting so vile. And we're, what bothered me about this is we're professionals. Mm -hmm. Like we know we're expecting to have a certain level of conduct during this time. And people are looking to us for guidance and, and we're role models. And to act like that, 
online. And I, I, I do want to give a quick shout out to my, my wife who, who honestly at one point said like, keep doing this. We need to do this because we need to be able to help get people get through this tough time. And, but it, it was hard. It was hard. It was hard. Of course yeah. it's hard. Yeah. It's hard and it's harmful. And the impact is wide reaching because racism means that there are certain people who aren't getting treated for their very specific conditions. There is a lack of research for BIPOC communities and conditions that affect them specifically because of racist attitudes. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, I think that this is one of the areas that people aren't totally aware yeah. about. Like a lot of the guidelines, the standards are based on if you're white, Anglo-Saxon, uh, male, for example, and you, you'll see in examples like, for example, blood pressure medication. There's certain blood pressure medications that don't work with people from African descent. And I think this is where we need to be spending more of our, our research and, and having making sure we have that lens of, is this representation representative of our whole population? You know, and I think you're seeing more of that in the medical field. And I, it's, just a, it's just important to highlight that uh, so that we, you know, moving forward, we, we address those issues. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, listen, just last week it was in the news that Manitoba is launching a new system-wide expansion of race-based data collection in hospitals. Um, and and it's, going, it's aimed to track how different racial groups were disproportionately impacted by COVID-19. Talk about the importance of that. So important. Like, uh, you know, when we saw who was hardest hit during the pandemic, racialized communities, when we saw who was admitted to hospital, who was risk of dying, who was risk of landing in ICU, the impacts of some of our restrictions were in racialized communities. And the reason it's important is so we could act on it. You know, like when we looked at, for example, in the, the Ottawa region, the Ottawa Public Health, they brought vaccines to the community. They brought testing to the, to the community. And that's what we, the, that's the power of having that data so that we can provide the best treatment for those that are at highest risk. Oh, thank you for doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Quadjo, we know that some of the topics we discussed today were difficult, so we really, really appreciate you coming here and enlightening our audience. And of course, we appreciate your expertise and the work that you do every day. Thanks for your time. Hey there, wasn't that great? Do you know where you can find some equally good content? Our YouTube page. It's filled with discussions, debates, and some laughs. Head there now, like and subscribe.